is question 13 of the step one maths paper from 2018, the last question in the paper, but uh, by no means the hardest one. Actually, this is a reasonably uh, accessible probability question, I think. So really worth looking uh, through all of the questions before you decide which ones to do. And, you know, I think having a go at some of these applied questions is really a good idea. Please do uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found it useful. And don't forget there's the uh, Amazon store and the website with loads of other useful stuff in it. And all of the videos for this paper, I'll also put in a playlist uh, and I'll uh, link that down below as well. Okay, so we've got a multiple choice test with five questions, each with N answers, at least two answers for each, and just one being correct. And the questions can either be attempted or not, but if you do attempt the question, you get plus two marks for a correct answer, but you lose one for an incorrect answer, and you score zero for no attempt. So there's no penalty for missing a mark, uh, missing a, a question out entirely here. Uh, the candidates don't understand any of the questions, so they're just going to be uh, guessing the answers at random from the N options. So when they answer a question, they're going to have a probability 1 over N of getting it correct, and uh, N minus 1 over N of being incorrect. Now in part one, uh, it says they're going to choose in advance to attempt exactly k of the questions, and what's the best possible choice of k here. Uh, and also the pass mark is five marks, so we need to score five marks out of these k questions. Right, so firstly we need to notice if we start with k equals 0, 1 or 2, I mean the maximum possible score we can get is 2, so if the pass mark here uh, is 5, then actually the probability of passing this test is going to be zero for those options. When k equals three, we can pass, um, and the pass here is equivalent to just getting all three correct. That's the only way we could do it. So uh, given that we've uh, chosen to answer three questions, the probability of passing the test here would just be 1 over n cubed, we've got to get them all right. Uh, for k equals 4, we could pass by getting all 4 correct, but we could also score 5 uh, by getting 3 correct and 1 incorrect. So the probability of a pass for this one will be 1 over n to the power of 4 for all 4 correct. And there's four choose three ways of getting three correct out of four. And that's got probability one over n cubed times n minus one uh, over n. So let's write this as one over n to the four. And four choose three is four. So this is four times n minus one over n to the four. And combining these together, we just get 4n minus 4 plus 1, so 4n minus 3, divided by n to the 4. And then for k equals 5, uh, we could pass by either getting 5 correct, or we could have 4 correct and 1 incorrect. But if we had 3 correct and 2 incorrect, uh, then we'd only get 4 marks, so that's not enough. So the probability of passing here is 1 over n to the 5 plus 5 choose 4 times 1 over n to the 4 times n minus 1 over n. Very similar way to the previous part, for the k equals 4 I mean. So that's 1 over n to the 5 plus 5 times n minus 1 over n to the 5. So that gives us 5n minus 4 over n to the 5. Okay, so we've worked out all of these probabilities um, and you know, we want to show that the best option is k equals 4. It's not uh, totally obvious perhaps from looking at this, although I think you could make a kind of informal argument here actually to say that the answer is reasonably clearly 4 just from the options here because uh, 4 is clearly better than 3 because um, the only way of passing with 3 is all 3 correct uh, and actually I can also pass with 3 out of 4 correct. So it's clearly easier to get 3 out of 4 than it is to get 
uh, three out of three, and then I've got this extra option that I might get them all correct as well. So arguably four is clearly better than three, and similarly perhaps four is clearly better than five because again if you compare these directly, well it's easier to get four out of four than five out of five, and it's easier to get three out of four than it is to get four out of five, kind of obviously. So, um, so you could make this, uh, but 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 it's quite hard to make that argument really clearly on paper I think, so perhaps the easiest thing is just to try and prepare these, uh, compare these uh, algebraically. So you know let's say that, um, so let's look at the expression for k equals 4 versus k equals 3, so if I did 4n minus 3 over uh, n to the 4 minus 1 over n cubed, two expressions that we've worked out there for k equals 4 and k equals 3, and we put those over a common denominator uh, of n to the 4, then that gives me 3n minus 1 over n to the 4, and that is here going to be uh, greater than 0, and if you just remember of course that uh, we have that n is always greater than or equal to 2, right, so I've got something definitely positive on the top, um, so that will always be greater than 0, and we can do something similar comparing k equals 4 with k equals 5, so if I did 4n minus 3 over n to the 4 minus 5n minus 4 over n to the 5, that would be n times 4n minus 3 minus 5n plus 4 over n to the 5, so that gives me 4n squared uh, minus 8n plus 4 over n to the 5, which is 4 times n squared minus 2n plus 1 over n to the 5, and it uh, looks like I've got quite a nice expression here, so that's 4n minus 1 squared over n to the 5, and again that's certainly going to be greater than or equal to 0, and strictly greater than 0 because n is greater than or equal to 2 here. Okay, so uh, okay, so uh, so the probability is highest, is uh, greatest, let's say, for uh, k equals 4 here. Right, so there's a fair amount of work in that first part, but actually once we've done that the rest of the question really falls into place quite nicely. So if we look at part two, it says given that candidate B passes, find the probability that they attempted all four questions. And uh, so this is really just a relatively straightforward conditional probability uh, problem here now. Um, so, you know, the probability that um, they attempted four, given that they've passed. Um, oh, and of course here we should say candidate B chooses at random the number of questions he will attempt. So uh, just one sixth chance uh, that he chooses to attempt zero, one sixth chance chooses to attempt one, etc. Right. So um, so the conditional for probability formula here says that this is the pro probability that he attempts. For anti passes uh, divided by the probability that he passes overall. Yeah, okay, so um, now the probability that he attempts for and passes, right? The numerator here, well, he, pro he attempts four questions with probability one sixth because he chooses that at random, as we've said, uh, and then independently passes with the probability that we've worked out earlier, and we, we found that when k equals 4 the probability of passing is 4n minus 3 over n to the 4, so we can just use that here. Okay, and what about the probability of passing overall? Well, again, can only pass in the cases that we've considered here, 3, 4, and 5, and so it's 1 sixth times the probability uh, that he passes with uh, having having chosen to do three questions, so that's one sixth times one over n cubed, plus one sixth 
plus one sixth times this same probability we've got here, 4n minus 3 over n to the 4 plus 1 sixth times the probability of passing with 5 questions, which is 5n minus 4 over n to the 5. So let's just put these um, together into a single fraction. We'll keep the 1 sixth outside here. And I've got n squared over n to the 5 plus n times 4n minus 3 over n to the 5 plus 5n minus 4 over n to the 5. So we've got 1 sixth times uh, n squared plus 4n squared here. So that's 5n squared minus 3n plus 5n is plus 2n minus 4, all divided by uh, n to the 5. So actually the probability that we were looking for at the beginning here, probability that he attempts 4 given that he passes 1 sixth times 4n minus 3 over n to the 4 and that's all going to be uh, divided by 1 sixth times 5n squared plus 2n minus 4 over n to the 5 so I get the sixths cancelling here and this just gives me then 4n minus 3 times n to the 5 divided by n to the 4 times 5n squared plus 2n minus 4. So I can cancel on n to the 4, top and bottom, get n times 4n minus 3 over 5n squared plus 2n minus 4. So in part 3, candidate C decides whether to attempt the question by tossing a biased coin. This has a probability n over n plus 1 of showing a head, and attempts the question if it shows a head. So uh, if k is the number of questions that she attempts, then that has a binomial distribution with parameters 5, and the probability is n over n plus 1 of attempting each question. So the probability that she attempts three questions, that's just the binomial probability 5 choose 3 times n over n plus 1 cubed times 1 over n plus 1 squared, um, the probability of attempting four questions is 5 choose 4 times n over n plus 1 to the 4 times 1 over n plus 1, and the probability of attempting five questions is 5 choose 5, or just 1, times n over n plus 1 to the 5. And of course the binomial coefficients 5 choose 3 is 10, and 5 choose 4 is 5. So the overall probability that candidate C passes here is the probability that uh, she attempts three questions multiplied by the probability earlier we found of passing given she attempts three questions. Of course, as before, k equals 0, 1, and 2 don't lead to any possibilities of passing. Plus the probability uh, that k equals 4 here, so 5 times n over n plus 1 to the 4 times 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by the probability we found earlier 4n minus 3 divided by n to the 4 uh, of passing given she attempts 4 questions plus finally uh, n over n plus 1 to the 5 multiplied by 5n minus 4 over n plus 1 again that's the probability we found earlier in part 1 so we've actually just got to uh, simplify this now and we can see there's a common denominator throughout here of um, n plus 1 uh, to the 5. So uh, here I've got 10 over n plus 1 to the 5 times n cubed and on the top I've also got an uh, n cubed. And in the next one here I've got a 5 n to the 4 and I've got 4n minus 3 and on the bottom n plus 1 to the 5 times n to the 4 and in the final one here I've got n to the 5 times 5n minus 4 divided by n plus 1 to the 5 and um, then oh I've written this wrong here this shouldn't be 5n minus 4 over n plus 1 that's 5n minus 4 over n to the 5 of course 
uh, and that's what I've got into the 5 here as well. And we can see in each of these fractions, n cubed cancels here, n to the 4 cancels, and n to the 5 cancels. So uh, we're almost done. I've got 10 plus, uh, let me multiply that, 5 times 4n minus 3 is 20n minus 15. And I've got plus 5n minus 4, all divided by n plus 1 to the 5. And then this gives uh, 25n and then plus 10 minus 19, so 25n minus 9 divided by n plus 1 to the 5. So actually, I think once you've got through part 1 of this question, part 2 and 3 in some ways are uh, um, reasonably natural consequences.